Absolutely. Well, we are all on the edge of our seat, Tanya, and it's very nice to see how uh, Magnus sat down. I mean, uh, the point is, is that it looks like the back injury that had impacted him so much in the sixth set isn't an issue. He sat, sat down rather gingerly, and uh, I was dead wrong. Um, uh, Peter, no Caro Khan. No Caro Khan, but uh, yeah, Magnus made sure that he will not land in this structure that uh, caused him those, those defeats. He played the move D6, and after castles, there is a new twist of A6, uh, basically, hunting down White's bishop at all costs. Hikaru reacted with bishop takes e6, b takes e6, d4, breaking the center. Black captured on d4, queen d4, bishop e7, e5, c5 on the board. Queen f4 also on the board. All played very quickly uh, for an opening that, at least for ourselves, was very unexpected. Uh, how deep is their preparation that they seem to be ready to to play every type of position in uh, under the sun uh, uh peter i i'm i'm just amazed that they just and and look they have more time than they started with oh sorry i take that back hikaru has more time than he started with yeah exactly i mean uh, but simply once uh, magnus showed this direction with d6 uh, then uh, I think team Hikaru must have anticipated that after castles, what happens after a6? Because it was about this move order issues. Uh, I don't know how deep was their preparation, but at least definitely they have kind of sp spoken about it that, okay, yeah, a6 exists the way how Hikaru reacted. Now we get, got a very strange uh, position because uh, opposite colored bishops, if white stabilizes, then one can argue that black has some uh, weaknesses, pawn c5, pawn c7. On the other hand, black is very active, so black will try to compensate for this uh, damaged pawn structure by active piece play. Exactly. Uh, bishop b7, the moment you said active piece play, I saw the bishop coming on b7. I said, yeah, that was a, that was a very necessary move. And Peter, we've seen some uh, endgame positions of bishops of opposite color where uh, an extra pawn here or there has actually not been important. Uh, even, if, for example, a move like knight e4 here is the ending. Nope, we didn't see it. We saw queen e6. Is these, are these endings where the c5 pawn is, is missing? Are they uh, good enough? There is a trick, by the way. I see queen c5, bishop g2. But, uh, Peter... Yeah, well, I mean, uh, of course, if White can just collect a pawn and uh, play an endgame with pawn up and opposite claw bishop with, with the rooks on the board, uh, that's that's a dream scenario for White. Very good winning chances. On the other hand, Black doesn't have anything about Egan's giving up the pawn if he can exchange all the heavy pieces and uh, can just go down to a opposite colored bishop endgame. Uh, however, Magnus with queen e6, of course, wants to highlight that I want to have my counter play. I want to keep queens. Right. He goes queen c6, eyeing the g7 pawn. Now, of course, bishop takes e5 would be a terrible blunder due to rook e5. All of a sudden, winning a piece and winning the game. Hikaru cleverly plays the move f3 and h6, queen takes e5. This is a clean pawn. Yeah, that was a very surprising move by... Um, for, for, for me, at least, uh, by Magnus, I had expected the move uh, C5, C4 for sure, because, okay, as you say, it's a, a clean pawn. I, I just want you to go back very, very quickly, because there was a, a movement that uh, Hikaru played H3. And the reason why Hikaru played H3, if you take the move back, and not queen takes C5, there was a cheapo, bishop takes G2, King takes g2, queen g4 check, and that's an instant draw for black, if not more. So that was why Hikaru played h3, and sorry to say, uh, go back to the current position, Peter, and what do we have? Yeah, well, we have this, what we have actually discussed, that if white gets a pawn for nothing with the rooks on the board, then these are excellent winning chances. Right. I mean, this is a total nightmare scenario for black. Of course, practically you can finally hold this but uh, especially in a blitz game white has white has all the chances to to win this 
Right, and we have seen the extraordinary tenacity of Hikaru uh, holding a difficult uh, endgame uh, positions. Uh, the shoe is on the other foot. Uh, Magnus, uh, I, I'm, I'm looking at the very end position of game two and game four. Uh, both came to a stalemate. One stalemate that was a pawn on h7 for Magnus, and the other game there was a stalemate on a7. Magnus has been the one who's been pushing and uh, coming up empty withdraws. Uh, now he's got to defend, and as you say, Peter. Uh, this for me is a nightmare uh, for the black player because white has all of the trumps and really just nothing to worry about. Yeah, but thanks to this bishop on e6 and with a very quick a5, a4. Wow. Yeah, this is very strategically very, very important that why black fixes uh, his pawn on a4, forces white to play a3, otherwise white would not be able to activate the rook from a1. So the actually now the structure is still a pawn up, but not so easy to create any pass pawn. The bishop on e6 gives stability. So now it's maybe the time for white, yeah, get the bishop to c3, start advancing g4, h4, king g3. Magnus, of course, uses the chance to go bishop f5. He wants to trade one pair of rooks. Does he want to change? Is that so good? I think he does, yes. And he has, in fact. Um, and I think it's absolutely of vital importance for Hikaru's chances to win this game to keep the uh, the rook on the board. You, after a move like rook e6 check, you never want to play rook e2. But because there is a rook on the board, it does mean that rook to d8 check and king d2 and maybe rook a8 could be really really a, a, a way that you just find yourself in a lost position. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if the that's why I did not like the exchange of rooks uh, so easily because white gets access to of bringing his king to d2. Yeah, g4 included, of course. This bishop on f5 is very powerful. Let's kick this bishop away. Well, the bishop on f5 was uh, tickling the pawn on c2 so the immediate rook d8 to a8 would have been met by bishop c2 so that's why uh, hikaru is trying to drive the bishop away from the c2 pawn bishop g6 uh stubborn as ever uh keeping uh, an eye there uh check uh and now after king f7 there will be another check and hikaru wants to put his king on d2 which he has done yeah, now the question is uh, how to how to protect these pawns. How is it possible to protect these pawns? Because white is threatening to, to attack them. Mm -hmm. and I think we also have to keep an eye on the clock because the in this yes. endgame, clock will play a very vital role. Absolutely. Uh, rook b7. So there's some ideas that if you go after the c pawn with rook c8 or even the a pawn with uh, rook a8, you've got a check, but why is that so meaningful, Peter? Uh, the king will drop back to c1. Uh, maybe rook e7 to e3, trying to collect some kingside pawns? Yeah, maybe, but it's a little bit scary. I can... It does feel a little bit scary suddenly, right? Yeah, on the other hand, thanks to this uh, bishop on g6, you are hitting c2, so whenever I take on a4, you might attack my c2 pawn with with a timely rook f2. Very, very good point indeed. Uh, I, mean, I like there, that. There are, there are all these possibilities, but it feels mm -hmm. like uh, black is on the verge of collapse. Maybe he can uh, escape by miracle. Okay, well, Magnus Carlsen's fans have got their, <laughs> got a lump in their throat right now as we are seeing the variation that we looked at. And Rook takes c5. The, 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 the nice part about that capture, you've been pointing out that the bishop on g6 aims itself against the pawn on c2. Well, now the rook on c5 defends the pawn on c2. And white is, is ready, is, is white ready for b4 here? And, you know, push them, baby, get those pawns up the board. Yeah, very interesting idea. Yeah, instead of trying to hunt the pawn A4 down, it might simply cost too much time. But now move like B4, forcing A, B3, C, B3, and then start pushing the pawns as quickly as possible. Yeah, and Hikaru did it. B4 is on the board. 
Uh, again, Peter, we should lower our voices so that the players don't hear us. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not sure if that's the that's the case. <laughs> I think they have other things to worry about right now. But, uh, uh, but look yeah, at look is... uh, look at Hikaru go. He's saying, uh, uh, "Go, little one, bring us glory, glory to but your." Can I go H5? Can I create some counter play with H5 here? Yes, and uh, H5, G5. Or does that open up the G7? I don't know. Um, my goodness, H5 trades, and you're saying if you take with the rook, oof, oof. Um, yeah, crazy, I know. it's. I think H5 is, is actually kind of necessary, Peter. Whether it works or not, I don't think that you just want to watch white go B4, B5, A6 and put your bishop on E4. I don't think that that's going to be sufficient way, uh, the, the, the right way to hold the game. I think well, we are seeing rook. Okay, rook. Oh boy! My what goodness. What exactly is the idea? Yeah, a6 played. I okay, think I we're going to see maybe a check. Maybe even b4 was possible. Ah, Magnus just wants to put the rook on a2, put the bishop on e4, and claim that you are not. But I can't believe that this works. Yeah, bishop a5 played. Wow! Uh, I thought we were going to see rook c2 check as a prelude to the move rook a2 uh surprising for me that he didn't want to put white's king on a light square it would have been very useful in my view uh, to have done that and now peter uh the pawn wow it got to a7 it got to a7 that to my mind says game over b4 and rook c8 Exactly. I mean, okay, Magnus wants to go then h5 and uh, go desperately. Maybe that's why he did not want to include uh, the check so that White's king is not closer to, to g1. Okay, here we stop for a moment because there's a lot to be said for rook e8 tickling the bishop. Yeah, and it's on the board. Okay. So the idea is that with this move, we've also got rook e6 check. And it also depends just where is that bishop going? Probably it finds its way on the diagonal, but there is rook e6 check and picking up the f5 pawn if, if we like. We could also just take and, and queen, and then we've got a b pawn that needs to be, to be pushed, Peter. Yeah, you can also take gf5 check. Yeah, black can't take it back. Yeah, king f7 had to be played. You right, queen. because king takes f5 would have walked into rook f8 check, and you take the bishop. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole point. You take the bishop, you give up the rook, and you make a girl. All right, so we have seen king f7, queen, takes, takes, g4. Now, yeah, the highly desirable b4, b4. Ooh, the b5 threatens bishop b4 check. Was but that bishop the right? b6 also, it's just over. It's over. That's the easy win. That's an easy win. Yeah, and Magnus resigned. Yes. Wow. Wow. Hikaru leads with that first win that he had, and to take it into the Armageddon, uh, Magnus needs to win. We've got lift off. Let's get Yas and Peter in. Thank you, Tanya. And away they go, Peter, as once again, it's the English, this time not with G3. We saw before. Uh, one game in a previous set, I've lost count. Bishop b5, knight c3 had been played. This time, a totally different twist. Queen c2, Peter. Yeah, bishop b5 had been played, and it was in fact a game which also Magnus had to win. It was maybe the very first set uh, when uh, Hikaru won that. And look at this. Hikaru is not surprised. He blitzes out everything. He Including. must have He must have prepared this variation for this match. Remarkable, including this move, f7, f5. So a2, a3, the knight uh, hops back. Um, uh, Peter, uh, something to be said for bishop b5 now? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is a, a very similar to some, uh, I mean, it's basically a reverse pause end, right? Exactly. Yeah, but Magnus one makes a shevening and out of it, yeah? So with d2, d3, yeah. With d3, yeah. So no more pause and it's shevening and a big question. It's always like there in this variation when white goes knight db5 and then comes back. We are seeing the same team. 
the big question will white play knight takes d because white wants to go b4 you can do it after trading on d5 but then bishop black gets a very strong bishop on d5 or you go bishop d2 magnus chose knight takes d5 i like this this is, it just feels so much more direct b2 b4 uh threatening uh, b5 and the e5 pawn is a la tempo so b4 bishop f6 bishop b2 it feels like that's the 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 the, the right move order uh peter uh, in b4 first of all uh step one uh peter yeah b4 has to be played of course by white this is the whole point black has to slow it down with a6 and uh, in this type of positions, the typical way is usually bishop b2, bishop c3, a4, b5, or bishop c3, queen b2. Mm -hmm. With reverse colors in the shevening and black is always in time to bring the queen to g3 here to g6 via queen e8, and then play bishop d6 and has strong initiative on the king side. However, here I do believe that tempos matter very, very much. So I don't know who will benefit. I mean, it's clear that it's in White's favor, but if he can really claim an advantage, that's that's another question. Exactly. So we do see Bishop D6. I mean, forcibly reminded of the uh, Gary Kasparov versus this one of found a non-match. Vichy took the lead in that match on the white side of the Shevenigan uh, Nidorf. And uh, with that bishop coming to d6, that was what the, that was the game. What reminded me of that game. And as you prescribed, Vic, uh, Peter, bishop c3, intending queen b2, a4, b5, uh, just hitting that pawn on e5 with everything you got. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, also making sure that black was not in time for this queen e8, queen g6. Yeah, Hikaru switches uh, direction. He tries to play strategical, FED, bishop g4 played. He's fighting for the d4 square. And also by uh, signaling that, aha, no, no, my friend, you don't have free hand with queen b2 because then I might sacrifice the exchange on f3 and get a very, very strong attack. So white has to react to this uh, move with bishop after bishop g4. And if you have to play a defensive move like queen d3, it a uh, little bit disbalances white's coordination but maybe you have to stop bishop takes f3 rook takes f3 yeah i see that also uh peter just as you've mentioned as a real danger because again uh magnus is in a force winning position uh, must win must win game if it's a draw uh ikaru nakamura will win uh, the magnus carlson uh, finals. Uh, so I do see uh, perpetual checks or repetitions as being on the agenda. I don't, I mean, Bishop C4 check followed by Knight moves might be okay if the Knight could move to G5, but Bishop C4 check, King H8, Knight D2, Knight D4. I'm wondering w why did I allow the Knight to drop in on D4? So whether you like it or not, I think you're right. Queen D3 looks like it, it, you just have to do it. Yeah, but it takes too much time from Magnus. On the other hand, I believe Magnus does does it correctly. I mean, there is three seconds increment. So after all, time is not the decisive. If he can now stabilize his position, get the balance, then uh, thinks, aha, and queen a2 check, knight e1. Very interesting, but I don't know if it will work out. Well, a, a different approach. He didn't want to uh, play to Black's agenda. So he's hoping for, once again, a good knight versus bad bishop. He's dreaming that Black will play bishop e2, queen e2, knight d4, bishop d4, e d4, and then with the superb blockading knight, knight to d3, uh, Magnus uh, would have every chances of equalizing the game. So that was why uh, Hikaru declined the opportunity to trade bishops. He played bishop d7, but isn't it time to now bring the knight on e1 back into play, Peter? Yes, definitely white wants to bring it back. The question is where to bring it back. I mean, do you want some knight c2, knight e3, which looks ideal, but then black will have this knight d4 idea, and after the exchange on d4, uh, the knight would uh, be misplaced. Magnus put the knight on d3, basically indicating that knight cover any kind of knight d4s. 
Mm-hmm. Without knight d4, you don't really have an attack going. And I just slowly want to stabilize my position. And after all, let's not forget, black has a weak pawn on e5. Black's pawn structure is worse, so he has to try to create dynamic compensation for the damaged pawn structure. Queen h4 played. And by the way, don't forget that uh, in this hyper-aggressive match, f2, f4 could have been a potential issue when the queen was on f6. So Hikaru uh, sidestepped the fact that his uh, his e5 pawn was in a bit of a pin. Queen h4, pity picking up a, a tempo against e4, rook e8, and wow, it's <laughs> this, this this game feels really tense, Peter. I <laughs> uh, This is fantastic. I, it's just been a great pleasure to call the action with you and Tanya, but wow, the, the players keep delivering, uh, Peter. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm also very, very nervous. I mean, I don't know why I'm so nervous. I simply feel with the feel with the players. I mean, whoever will lose, I will really feel very sorry for him. So yeah, I'm I'm very, very tense now. Right now, rooting for Magnus maybe to come back, but uh, okay, Hikaru also deserves everything what he has done in this match. So yeah, let's just enjoy the show. Yeah, they're going toe to toe. Queen d2. There's a the, the, there's a pause here because Bishop d3 tickling the rook, just suggesting to the rook that it shouldn't be on the open d file, uh, is one idea. Another idea is to just plant the bishop on c4. Uh, another idea is to potentially double the rooks on the f file. Now that the f3 pawn is a little bit weakened, and Bishop b3 uh, might let's say uh knee jerk move was a uh, hikaru's choice rook c1 and peter the clocks well uh magnus is uh magnus i want to say significantly behind one minute is huge as we know in armageddon peter yeah well it's even uh, more than a minute already uh, on the other hand his position is stable so he might be able to make uh, very natural moves yeah hikaru tries to use that minute whoa, 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 by whoa. messing things up with with a5 whoa, mean, whoa, whoa. Things... There's, a, there's a hanging bishop on b3 knight e5 95 oh but then there's bishop d4 and there's a rook on f2 sorry uh, uh, sorry peter i just thought there was a hanging pawn uh this one it doesn't work but can he play b5 uh, Peter, and then take on e5 because there's this hang. Oh, there's knight d4. Oh, geez, Peter, it's 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 super sharp. Yeah, it's super sharp now. Magnus played the move knight c5, which I don't like at all. Black can take on c5, play a4, get the knight to d4. No, Hikaru takes a b4. That's a that's a big surprise. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, after bishop takes c5, of course, white takes queen takes c5. Pardon of me. It's of course the the key idea from from white white has to trade the queens and right. uh, this case in the end game the pawn on e5 uh, might be might be weak precisely that's the imbalance that uh magnus is striving to create that uh the two bishops in an ending and the pawn on e5 weakness uh one minute to two minutes and the the tension keeps ratcheting it ratcheting up uh, yeah, Carl, but I still I still felt like this option of playing a5 a4 in eventually was a very important resource for black so I'm intuitively I'm not liking this exchange on b4 but in blitz it's so natural that okay let me play instantly a b a b then I take on c5 but it might have been a slight inaccuracy all right and we have seen the trade of queens uh, knight jumps to d4, king g2, a psychological moment as uh, as Magnus invites a bishops of opposite color. He's banking on the fact that he will have the dark square bishop, and thanks to the pressure eventually against the pawn on g7, he'll be superior. Is he right, Peter? Well, I mean, now he goes for the pawn grab. I felt like maybe it's more Magnus style just to defend with rook f2, force okay. that... Uh, force that passive position with black with after rook e8 and try to play maybe g4 h4 king g3 and just to play that position there but uh, maybe bishop. magnus magnus felt like he can he can just grab the pawn and but bishop a4 bishop to i know bishop a4 he takes rook b7 or what 
Uh, there was a problem with Bishop D1 in the position after Rook F2. Uh, it w wasn't so clear. Uh, ah, uh, yes, either. very nice point. Yeah, then yeah. I might be even forced to give the exchange. Right, exactly. But you're right, Bishop C6, Rook takes, but Rook takes, Bishop takes E4. Oh my goodness, what's going on? This, oh no, Bishop C6, Bishop G7, I apologize. Uh, don't want to fall into a, a, a double attack tactic, uh, Peter. Yeah, did maybe Hikaru miss it? Because the point was that actually the bishop was not hanging on B3 thanks to the rook on F3. So there was no real reason that black had to move this rook. But okay, yes. the tension now, Hikaru is below one minute. Magnus is ahead on the clock. Wow, what is happening here? Well, rook takes B7. It looks like it's just over after C five c6 and i gotta think that that is a winning position for white he's done it oh my god winning on demand this would be <laughs> this yeah, would be and remarkable seven runs into bishop d6 now right uh, uh, sorry sorry i mean rookie seven bishop d6 is a winning trick as oh well. that's a beauty please show that to our audience as that is a marvelous little tactic, rook e7, bishop d6, uh, skewering a rook and the pawn is pinned. So that would win an exchange. Hence the move h5 and Magnus uh, to play. And Peter, the pawn on c7 sure looks tempting. What's wrong with grabbing the pawn? Yeah, but how do you uh, take it? Because if you bishop. take it the rook, then I have rook c8 at the end, bishop takes c7. Bishop Do takes I... c seven is my move, uh, Peter. Uh -huh. Bishop takes e seven, yeah, and no tricks, right? Well, rook c eight. Then I go back with my bishop, bishop f four, and uh, all the rooks are hanging. But that's an extra pawn, and he has done it. And now we see. Okay, now there's one trick in the position for Hikaru, and that is bishop f four, double question mark, bishop c six. With the Swish and Zug, Bishop E4, and that would clinch the tournament victory, the tour victory for, for Hikaru. But don't go Bishop F4, go Bishop D6 so that you can tickle the Rook on F8. And that should win for Magnus, uh, uh, Peter. Yeah, but Magnus down to nine seconds on the clock. No! And the nine seconds? Yeah, oh, the position my. should be winning, but okay, let's not forget about the clock. The nine seconds did the world champion. Ooh, I there's mean, but a rook lucky for him, it doesn't matter now. Yeah, it's, take the it's rook, just over. Take the rook on f2 and promote the pawn to a queen. That would have been an easy win. He's played rook c8. And oh, it's over. It's over. Yeah, Magnus bounced back. It's, it's <laughs> all tied again. 